Mr. Randolph, could I have a private word with you? Oh, yes, for sure, brother. <laughs> I'm Dr. Garner from the Good Samaritan Health Center. Yes. I really enjoyed your sermon today about how one must not be indifferent to the problems of society. Yes, well, the law that God gave Moses still applies today. Yes, it does. Well, how may I help you? I was wondering if you could help us with our condom distribution program. <laughs> Wait a second, Dr. Garner. You don't want to distribute condoms in the church. Oh, no. I want you to distribute them in the church. <laughs> Doctor, I respect what you're trying to do, but I believe abstinence outside of marriage is the answer. Yes, that's what you just preached. And I agree. Abstinence is the method of choice for preventing pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases. Yes, and not to mention that it's also morally correct. But do you realize how difficult it is for a young person with raging hormones to suppress his sexual urges? <laughs> Yes, I do. Reverend Randolph, do you know there are over a million teenage pregnancies in this country each year, and 85% of those are unplanned? Yes, well, Dr. Gardner, those numbers are tragic. And on right top now. of that, nearly 20% of people with AIDS were infected as teenagers. Well, Dr. Gardner, believe me, I hate what's happening as much as you do, but right and now... Could I send you some materials on this subject? That way you'd at least have the information. Oh, absolutely. I'll read any literature that you send. Good. I'll be in touch. Well, thank you, Dr. Garner. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Just one question. You're not married. How are you able to abstain? <laughs> Prayer! <laughs> oh! Hola! Excuse me, Pastor Randolph. Looks like you better start praying. Hi, I'm Vanita Stansberry, and I was watching you in church. I mean, I just wanted to come by in person and tell you how much... Oh, I really enjoyed your service. Oh, well, thank you very much, Miss Stansberry. Well, please call me Vanita. Okay, Vanita. Oh, I understand you're looking for a secretary. Yes, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Well, I would like to apply for the job. Oh, okay. Well, I think I have an application around here somewhere. You know, I recently graduated from college, mm -hmm. and I'm looking for work, and I'd like to be a part of your life. I mean, <laughs> the life of the church here at the Church of Life. Yes. Well, Benita, what you should try to under... <laughs> yes, what, um... What you should understand is that we don't really have that much money, and um, the job only pays $500. A week? A month. That's fine. <laughs> okay, well, we work long hours, sometimes 10 or 12 hours. Mm -hmm. We work weekends. There's a lot of phone work, mm -hmm. a lot of filing, a lot of typing. You're a college graduate. You sure you want to do this? It sounds perfect. When do I start? <laughs> well, you might want to fill out the application. It's real long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take it home. We'll talk about it next week. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Reverend? Yo, that was a slamming sermon today. I like that. It's just uh, too bad it didn't show in the collection basket. <laughs> Thanks anyway, T. What was your favorite part? Um, you know, the part where you made out on really good points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that the part where I caught you with your eyes closed? No, 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 Rev, I was just in deep spiritual meditation <laughs> on your message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, lucky for you, T, there won't be a quiz on it. You ain't never lied. <laughs> All done. All right. The zip code of my third personal reference, they just moved. Oh, well, it looks like everything's in order. So, when do I start? Oh, uh, tomorrow, I guess. Thank you, Pastor. I will be here bright and early. Okay. By the way, do you need a wake-up call? Uh, <laughs> 
No, no, but 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 thank you. Okay. All right. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Vanita, you're here bright and early. Good morning, Reverend. I didn't know how you liked your coffee, so I brought milk, cream, mocha cream, half and half, low fat, non fat, non dairy, <laughs> sugar, sweet, low, honey, and uh, brown sugar. Well, that is quite impressive. <laughs> you make me wish I drank coffee. <laughs> I have juice. Oh. I have. Orange, apple, cranberry, tomato, pineapple, and passion fruit. Well, how about orange? Okay. It's great. I squeezed it fresh. Where did all this juice come from? It's my treat. Oh. Well, I have never been treated so well. Well, get used to it, Reverend. Oh, by the way, would you like to have dinner tonight? <laughs> Excuse me? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be so forward. It's just that my parents used to be members of this church, and I'll bet if they got to know you, they'd be interested in coming back. Well, thanks, Fanita, but um, I've got a lot of work to do, so maybe some other time? Well, if you change your mind, the invitation is always open. Okay. Reverend <laughs> Ray, you got a delivery from the uh, Good Samaritan Health Center. Oh, great. Why don't you bring it in here? Wonderful. I have been expecting this. Thanks for helping me bring it in, team. You know me, Red. Do rain, shine, slit, or snow. I'm delivering packages right to your door. <laughs> this is a lot. I'll <laughs> say. It's going to take me about a week to get through all this. Only a week? See, I've got more in my life to do than just this. You're my hero, Remy! <laughs> what in the world are you talking about? <laughs> now, see, I told Dr. Gardner we cannot distribute these things in the church. Oh, that's all right, man. I got your back. I'm going to take more to my crib. No, no. T, you are going to take these back to the health center. Reverend, Mr. Dixon. How you living, Miss D? How you living? T, why don't you take these canned goods back to the soup kitchen? Something wrong with you? I. No, T, just get them out. What is wrong with that child? I don't know, Mrs. Dixon. He came with the church. Well, I just came by to congratulate you. Are you setting me up again? No, no, no. Hiring Vanita Stansberry is probably the smartest thing you've ever done. Well, I don't know. She seems a little forward. Today was her first day at work, and she's already invited me over for dinner with her parents. Well, I hope you said yes. No, I didn't. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Let me explain to you who Vanita Stansberry's parents are. This church has a $25,000 note due every year. Mm -hmm. Before you showed up, they paid it. <laughs> Ms. Dix, now you're telling me I should woo her parents back into the church so I can put a squeeze on them? Well, Pastor Douglas called it the economic empowerment of the spiritual community. <laughs> Well, sounds like begging to me. You know, Reverend, you really need to be a little more business-minded. See, you need to learn how to sell. You got to know mm -hmm. when to... Kiss up. Exactly. <laughs> now, I'm going to go make a phone call to the Stansberries mm -hmm. and invite them to dinner at your house tonight. Mrs. Dixon, at the parsonage... Now, I just moved in there, and I'm not ready for dinner, guest. Well, then leave everything to me. I'll do the bacon, the cooking, and the frying. All you have to do is the button up. You planning on wearing that sweater? 
Yeah, what's wrong with it? Nothing if you're Tiger Woods. <laughs> So this is a $25,000 dinner. Cassie, go upstairs to the pastor's bedroom and get a gray sports coat to match his pants. Miss Dixon, I can't go up in the pastor's bedroom. Uh, Cassie, if he's not in the bed, it's just a room. <laughs> now go on. <laughs> pastor. Yes. <clears throat> just remember to turn up the charm. Turn up the charm, huh? Mm hmm The church is dependent on you. Fine. All right, we'll just we'll just uh, put them in the armoire. Good plan. I got your back. Come in. T. No, no, no. T, T, just take the box and put it in the armoire. Take the box and put it in the armoire. Go, 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 go. in this house. Yes, ma'am. Master. Crowd answers a lot of things, but not a ringing doorbell. I'm coming. Here you go, Reverend. Thank you, Cassie. Hi. Hi. Oh, Miss Hotdog. Hi, Oh, oh, it's an author. You look great. Yes. So glad you could come at such short notice. Now, I'd like for you to meet Pastor David Randolph. <laughs> oh, we know who he is. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, Pastor. Thank you. Vanita just can't stop talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, please, let's, um, let's have a seat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, Lois and Arthur, it is so good to see you again here, baby. Oh, Hedda, you know we'd walk five miles across the desert for your homemade meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> And ten miles for that peach gobbler. Yeah! <laughs> we are having meatloaf tonight, huh? We wouldn't be having anything else. Uh. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go put the finishing touches on that meatloaf. <laughs> uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stansberry, I'm so glad you could make it. I only wish you could have brought along your other children. Shamika and Aisha and the twins, Dante and D'Artagnan, and the baby, Reyna, who used to be called Pookie. Of course, everybody now knows it's Ray Ray. <laughs> Well, I see you've done your homework, Reverend. Well, Mr. Stansberry, I'm just taking a natural interest in former members that are interested in rejoining the church. Oh, I wouldn't go jumping the gun on that one, Pastor. Yeah. How about some cheese and crackers? See, I'm gonna need a bigger bowl. Get me that big salad bowl on the armoire. <laughs> explains it. <laughs> Dinner is served! Uh -oh. Not a moment too soon. Mm, smells good. It's starving. I know, I know, I know, but you know what? I got a plan. What? When you bless the table, mm -hmm. say a good long prayer. Get it? Got it. Good. <laughs> ah, Pastor, we're just yes. about ready for you to bless the table. Okay. <clears throat> well, everyone, bow their heads. 
Dear Lord, we bow our heads and keep our eyes closed real tight. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful meal, for helping us and letting us share this with friends. Thank you for Mrs. Dixon helping me prepare this meal. And Lord God, we really hope that you help Bull T find what he's searching for in life. Because sometimes, Lord, the search takes a long, long time. Lord, we also want to thank you for um, the farm workers who helped in making such a wonderful feast. And Lord God... Traditional blessing the Reverend offered. Well, that's because I'm very, very thankful. <laughs> Daddy, that was a wonderful dinner. Well, thank you, Arthur. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Stansberry, I can't tell you how much I enjoy me. Reverend, I'm going to stop by our services on Sunday to hear you preach. Now, if I like what I hear, that collection plate might be a little heavier when I leave. You coming, Vanita? In a minute. I just want to speak to the Reverend. Okay, well, I will walk you to your car. Nice meeting you again. Say. Vanita, you have a wonderful family. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I can't tell you how happy I am to have you working with me. Oh, I won't be working with you. Why not? Because I'm quitting. Ooh. Oh, well, uh, Vanita, you don't understand. Oh, I understand. You preach one thing and you practice another. And it looks like you get a lot of practice. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. I had a sermon prepared this morning, but something happened the other night. And I wanted to share it with all of you. I had a dinner party. This dinner party was a fundraiser. And I was, of course, on my best behavior. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Dr. Garner from the Good Samaritan Health Center sent over 3,000 condoms for me to distribute in church. Now, the boxes arrived a little bit before my distinguished guest so naturally, I went about the task of hiding them because condom is supposed to be a dirty word. So I hid these condoms underneath the rug, literally, because I was afraid of being caught. I was embarrassed, like we're all embarrassed when we have to talk about Teen pregnancy, AIDS, and other sexually transmitted diseases. Now, I'm not here to tell you, church, that I got the answer to all these problems. But what I am here to tell you is that we cannot and we will not hide from these problems one more day. Because these problems will not go away. And that we, as a church, must at least begin to face these problems. So maybe, I said maybe with God's help and a little bit of help from the good doctor as well. We together can face these problems to make it a better world for our children and our children's children and our children's children's children. Yes. I say yes. Yeah. If you love them, just say glory. glory. Just say glory. glory. Oh, yes. Choir, I don't believe I hear you. Come on, choir, I don't believe I hear you. Are you going to sing something for me or what? I didn't notice you back there. You were busy. 
Well, thanks for coming to service. Well, I couldn't tell my family the real reason I wanted to stay home. 